We've got some interesting news out of Indian motorcycle. Some would say it's overdue. I'm just excited to see how the Chief platform is continuing to develop. Because the Chief has got sporty. Which is to say that the new generation steel frame has got sporty. And I've got to say that I'm impressed with what we have seen so far of the 2023 Sport Chief. Since the launch of the impressive Thunderstroke engine, and particularly since they increased the capacity to 116 cubic inches, knocking on the door of 1900 cc's, we have been looking forward to Indian fitting one into a lively chassis. And while the steel frame that was introduced a couple of years ago, the story which you'll find in a conversation with Ola Steengard, Indian's head of design, linked here, when some way towards realising that ambition, it was still a few choice components short of the hot roaster that it might have been, and which it is now. So, what constitutes a sporty Indian chief? Our American friends do have something of a reputation when it comes to adding the letter S or the word sport for model designation. It's not so much about adding more power as giving you the tools to use what you've got more effectively. And the good news is that Indian have not only fitted a pair of 320mm semi-floating discs with four-pot calipers in place of the Chief's single 300mm unit, but they have substantially upgraded the suspension front and back too. They have stuck with the Pirelli Night Dragon tyres of the base Chief, a 130 section 19 up front backed by a 180 by 65 on the 16 inch rear, we assume because while a pair of 17 would have given more tyre choice, they would have ruined the style, which has gone all sons of anarchy, functional street bike on us. Don't knock it. That transformed sales of Harley's Dyna model stateside. In the Sport Chief's case, that means a pair of tracker bars on straight 6-inch motor-inspired risers tucked behind an oversized bikini fairing, known on the other side of the pond as a quarter fairing. It doesn't take much imagination to suggest that Indian has been taking lessons from the motor company. Indeed, I'm sure that many will point out, and quickly, that there is more than a hint of the low rider S stroke ST about the new Chief. But in reality, this is aimed at a quite different rider with a big enough gap between the two to park a Nightster, or an FTR. In a previous decade, you might have expected Harley-Davidson to have taken the aggressive fists-in-the-wind custom approach, but Indian are happy to cater for the traditional American market, while their neighbours in Wisconsin are chasing new customers with a sleeker and more modern style. Arguably, the bikes they are based on gave them very different starting positions, but that doesn't count for the El Diablo in Harley's Icon series, which has a very similar stance, albeit with the bigger fairing and the small saddlebags of the ST. Meanwhile, back at the plot, what Indian have done with the already excellent new Chief is to fit best-in-class suspension and brakes. In this context, that means 43mm KYB inverted front forks with those twin four-piston radial-mounted Brembo brakes, the same setup as used on their sporty Tora the Challenger, and Fox piggyback shocks with adjustable preload at the rear, offering a 33% increase in suspension travel, along with an inch more ground clearance, and a corresponding increase in seat height. And we can't leave without mentioning the 15-spoke wheels pilfered from the Challenger's pass bin, which might lack the rim's painted key line, tyre pressure sensors and the Messler Cruise Tech tyres of the liquid cool Power Plus Taurus. And, of course, more spoke means more cleaning, but they do look good. These modifications offer superior road holding and improved lean angle, OK, so one degree more, taking it up to 29.5 degrees, and more confident stopping power, but that's what you expect from something with sport in the name. Speaking of names, this is very much a dark horse in orbit name, with its blacked out engine and an absence of chrome, and failing to acknowledge that seems to be a strange omission. As such, the only paint colour in a limited colour palette is stealth grey. Think gloss primer and all those quips about Americans having no sense of irony. Backed up by an inevitable monochrome tastic black smoke with ruby smoke and matte red hue to reassure you that you are looking at colour photographs. For some reason that is lost to me, Indian don't seem to be reaping the benefits of their on-site paint facility. Maybe senior management are still nervous after radical excesses in victory days. But even more confusing is that they've shown us a model in a stunning shade called Spirit Blue Smoke in a folder called Not EMEA. And that's the money shot for me, but hey. Visually, the quarter fairing, high bars and fast back seat transform the look of this newest member of the chief family, but don't make rash assumptions based on quick observations. The tall handlebars are more about wrist angles than height, the regular chiefs aren't much lower, and the bobbers are higher, both helped by subtle three-inch risers but all give very different rider ergonomics, with the Sport Chief being by far the more aggressive. Helped by the Chief's mid-mounted footrests, you will lean into the oversized handlebar fairing, somewhere between BMW's R90S and Harley's FXRT, and in a good way, which will keep the worst of the headwind under control. Wincing pillion riders need not worry about the prospect of perching behind a rider with the red mist descending, though, because what looks like a styling flourish is exactly that, or at least the lack of rear footrest suggests that it is, 
There is space for pillion footrest above the familiar twin mufflers, as evidenced by the Super Chief, and somebody will bring out a dual seat that suits the Sport Chief style. But the accessories that have been shown at time of launch are 10 and 6 inch risers, a shorter or taller screen, a fully adjustable rear shock, and a more stylized Syndicate solo seat. There is a Syndicate Fastback dual seat available, in which case you need a pair of pillion pegs too. We are seeing a tuck and roll solo seat that leans towards the custom sector, as do the modest range of Chief, Bobber and Super Chief accessories, many of which will bolt straight on. They haven't shown the Sport Chief with a Super Chief's two-piece dual seat on it, and nor should they. It's not that style of bike. And all of this is on top of an already stunning motorcycle that really raised Indian's game in the street sector. The chassis is a masterpiece. The motor is a work of art that delivers addictive levels of real-world torque and power. Its instrumentation, the first circular LCD multifunction speedo taco with sat-nav and most of the right command functionality from Indian's touring models built in, is a game-changer. And not only because it gives you access to the three ride modes that get the best out of that motor. And it is proportionally right, physically. Which is to say it's the size of a 1970s big twin. Compact and easily manageable with a 27-inch seat height, albeit carrying a few extra pounds, tipping the scales at 302 kilos or 666 pounds, much of which is in the Thunderstroke's one-piece forged steel crank. In its entry-level guise, the Chief has presence, and the sport looks like taking that a few stages further, with an authority and attitude that has long been the preserve of an American heavyweight. The best news of all, however, is that the Sport Chief pricing starts at a 5 or less than 20k in the UK for the Black Smoke, with a further 500 quid for the Ruby Smoke or Stealth Great at the time of writing in February 2023. That puts it halfway between Harley Davidson's Lowrider S and ST with an El Diablo stance, which is right on the money. Talk to your friendly Indian dealer for more details and news of availability. We hope you like the new face of American V magazine. Video, that is, not mine, which is very much the old one. And if you do, please like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel. It's free and apparently it helps. At least that is what all the cool kids are saying. The jury is out regarding the paper edition. Increased costs, reduced revenues and distribution issues mean we parked it while the market restabilizes. But if I can learn to talk properly and get my head around video production, the American V channel will only grow. Hey, he might even cover his costs. The plan is to work towards a weekly half hour backed up by news pieces like this, but the video editing learning curve is a steep one, quite apart from learning how to make new content visible to the algorithms that decide what you see. And I've just arrived at base camp, metaphorically. This, for example, took the best part of a week, but then it was all new ground. Writing, shooting, editing, writing, writing, shooting, re-editing, 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 re-shooting, and then putting the whole lot together with pictures. That isn't to say, of course, that we haven't been playing with video for a while now, as time and technology has allowed, but it has always been to promote the magazine rather than as an end in itself, and it is of, let's say, inconsistent quality. But I would ask you to check it out, if only to take the piss. It all adds to the number of views, which combined with subscriber numbers brings the possibility of getting monetized ever closer. American V will continue to be original content written from the vantage point of real-world riders in the UK, and we are only doing it because we think there's a lack of content in this particular sector and we hope to be able to build upon our reputation for honesty and integrity. Thank you for your time and patience. Well done for getting this far, and we'll see you on the road somewhere.